Hi guys. Um, my name is San Jacob. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York, which is um, a small medieval town in England. Um, and um, I've become increasingly interested in the subject of ectopic beats and why people get palpitations because I've realized through my videos that a lot of people out there suffering from this. And a lot of times what happens is the person goes to the doctor and the doctor just says, oh, there's nothing serious, forget about it. And they forget about it. And then the doctor then just discharges the patient and the poor patient is stuck left thinking, gosh, these are not going away. And in some ways they actually continue to get worse because the patient feels anxious, they don't feel adequately reassured. Um, whilst it is true that they're not dangerous, they're undoubtedly some, um, a symptom that can cause a huge adverse impact on a person's quality of life. And there are lots of things uh, that uh, modern day practitioners ignore or don't talk about when they see their patients uh, because modern day medicine is about pill pushing, truthfully. And they don't look at how lifestyle can cause some of these symptoms and how a change in lifestyle can make things better. So over the past few weeks, I've been talking about natural ways of getting rid of your palpitations. And I've talked about diet and I've talked about drink. And I think one of the most important things, one of the most important um, variables in uh, your overall health is sleep. And this is commonly ignored. And the truth is that very few of us get the amount of sleep that we really require. And that is just the way it is now in the Western world. Everyone is stressed, everyone is go, 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 and we don't get enough sleep. And um, sleep is very important because we have um, natural stress hormones, uh, and our stress hormone is cortisol. And I'll talk to you about cortisol in a little while so that you understand where I'm coming from. Um, and sleep allows your cortisol levels to fall. So you get your stress hormones uh, during the daytime, but they then need to fall in the evening when you're asleep. Uh, and if they are not allowed to fall, or, um, then they can ca cause all sorts of havoc. Okay, so to try and explain this to you, let's think of someone, uh, let's think of a patient who has an excess of cortisol. And these patients are called, uh, are often diagnosed with a condition called Cushing syndrome. So Cushing syndrome is a pathological condition uh, where people have excessive amounts of cortisol in their body because they've got a tumor or something that is releasing cortisol. And if you look at these patients, you will be struck by how they look because they're often overweight, they're often um, depressed, they often are um, um, obese, trunkily obese, they're often prone to infections, they're often um, diabetic. Um, and <clears throat> and uh, they, they can often also have heart-related problems as well. So, so when you look at that, you know, what an extreme increase in cortisol levels can do to someone. Now, although we, most of us are not people who have Cushing's disease, we are not getting enough sleep, which means we have much higher levels of cortisol in our body and our cortisol levels remain higher for a longer period of time. And the problem with cortisol is that um, when you have higher stress hormones, um, the stress hormones tend to push vital electrolytes inside the cells. So there are certain electrolytes in our body, uh, potassium and magnesium. Magnesium is particularly important and often ignored, uh, but cortisol or excessive amounts of cortisol will take magnesium from our plasma and push it intracellularly and therefore can cause transient reductions in magnesium levels. And this I'm sure is one of the reasons why uh, people often wake up early in the morning when they've got palpitations. You know, they'll say, they'll say I, I get up early first, you know, much earlier than I need to, or than I used to. And I'm often woken up by a thump or a, or a skipping of my heartbeat. And then I lie there and my heart will be pounding away. And I suspect that this is why it happens because they haven't slept enough and 
overnight their magnesium levels have gone the magnesium levels have fallen and they've gone intracellularly and that's why they start getting these palpitations the other thing to say is that your inflammatory levels um, go up and so inflammation goes up um, when you don't have enough sleep sleep is a beautiful beautiful anti-inflammatory uh, and if you're not getting enough sleep, so if you're going on six hours, five hours on a regular basis, your stress hormones are up, your inflammation levels are up. And again, infl having higher inflammatory levels means a, a, a greater irritability of the heart. So that's another reason. Now, what happens then? So the patient will not have enough sleep for whatever reason because they're busy or they've been stressed they uh, then wake up first thing in the morning um, they get the pounding then that causes fear and that causes a release of adrenaline okay adrenaline um, will come and adrenaline is another stimulant and again with adrenaline uh, you get more irritability of the heart and again adrenaline will push your electrolytes inside the cells so something like magnesium will go inside the cells and again that will propagate things okay um and then a lot of people will say to me well i also get a lot of palpitations towards the end of the day and that's because the stress hormones have been up all day and the night and the night before um and so it is really really important um to understand that uh, and i suspect that that's another reason why magnesium supplementation works or improving your magnesium intake works because uh, a lot of us in the western world are on right on the edge we are not taking enough magnesium in in our diet um, partly because of processing of food and so when you have foods which are being which are heavily processed you know the magnesium is taken out of that or is destroyed and therefore we're not getting enough magnesium in and i suspect that um, uh, having a lack of sleep uh, having high inflammatory levels high um, cortisol levels and high adrenaline levels contributes to this transient magnesium deficiency uh, which causes our palpitation so the important thing is to try and be religious about trying to get enough sleep when you're getting particularly when you have a flare of palpitations it's really important you know even if you need to even if you need to try and um, take something to help you sleep it's really really important to try and get seven eight nine hours of sleep uh, because that can have a very nice anti-inflammatory effect on the heart. Uh, it will restore your electrolyte um, equilibrium and uh, you will feel better. The second thing to talk about is um, the um, concept of sleep apnea. Okay, as a population, as a population in general, we're getting older, but we're also getting fatter. Okay, so we are undoubtedly human beings are undoubtedly getting more overweight and that is because of our lifestyle what we eat um, you know etc and so the problem with that is that now I, I was in a conference recently and someone told me that one in five people have a condition called sleep apnea and what that means is that particularly patients who have become overweight over a period of time um, what happens is you have uh different phases of sleep okay so you're awake and then you go into light sleep and then you eventually go into deep sleep which is a restful phase and people with sleep apnea what tends to happen is that they go they're okay going into light sleep but as soon as they sink into deep sleep they're unable to breathe and so they hold they don't breathe and therefore they have to come back to light sleep to take a deep breath in and then they go back to deep sleep and they come back to light sleep and they do this 40 50 times an hour and uh, that means that they are never getting a, a good night's restful sleep um, and they are therefore much more inflamed and they also have much higher stress levels during the night so in essence they are almost like it's almost like being awake 24 hours a day and uh, if you suspect that you may have sleep apnea and some of the symptoms of sleep apnea are um, um, heavy snoring, 
or daytime, uh, excessive daytime sleepiness, uh, then it is worth going and seeing your doctor and getting checked out for sleep apnea. Uh, because what can happen is that uh, you can be given a machine called a CPAP machine, where uh, when you forget to breathe, the machine blows air into your lungs and thereby uh, keeps you breathing without you having to move from deep sleep to light sleep. Uh, and that can make a huge difference to people's quality of life, but it can also make a difference to the prevalence of ectopic beats and palpitations during the daytime. The other thing to say is that um, in um, 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 uh, people with sleep apnea, sometimes what tends to happen is people don't get that night, that restful night's sleep. Uh, in the morning, they wake up with headaches, they get tired, and that brings on a degree of depression. Again, and depression is again a very inflammatory condition. They then go to their general practitioner who, they'll, who is then always um, ready to prescribe antidepressants. But actually antidepressants, paradoxically, make the sleep apnea worse. And therefore you don't feel any better despite being on antidepressants. And you wake up and you're more depressed, and then you go and the GP will add in more depression. And so the important thing is to realize that it's not the antidepressant that you need, it is more sleep that you need and more good quality sleep. And whatever you can do to get that good quality sleep, you should do it. So I would certainly think that if you're carrying extra weight at the moment, um, it's worth getting checked out for sleep apnea, but also try and get that weight off. It's very important to try and get a good night's sleep. And if you do that um, on a regular uh, basis, take eight hours sleep, I can guarantee that your um, ectopics will get less frequent, no matter what. I, I'm absolutely confident of that. Um, finally, the other thing to also to say is that if you have sleep apnea, what it means is that you are um, short of oxygen because you're forgetting to breathe during the night when you're sleeping. And that means that the heart has to work much harder to try and get blood into the lungs quicker because if there's less oxygen, then you need more going around, more blood going around to collect any oxygen that is there. And therefore that strains the heart. And if it strains the heart, then the atria, the atrium, the left atrium and the right atrium, which are the top two chambers of the heart, take that stress. And when they take that stress, they can dilate and they can cause an increased frequency of PACs or premature atrial complexes. Uh, so we often see people who have lung disease, who have bad bronchitis or emphysema, or who have sleep apnea, having a higher propensity of premature atrial complexes. And that would be another mechanism by which sleep could cause your ectopic beats. So I can't stress this enough. Sleep is uh, very much ignored in modern day medicine, uh, but very, very important. And I think it's really important that you um, uh, are aware of what your sleep patterns are like. And now you have these apps, and I use one myself uh, called Sleep Cycle. And, um, that can give you, and having that and putting the phone under your pillow uh, can make you more aware of how well you're sleeping and you can try and work towards improving your sleep. Um, and if you do that, I promise your um, ectopics will get less frequent. Uh, so that's all I have to say about sleep. Um, um, and um, I hope you found this uh, useful. I'm really grateful for, to you again for all the great comments on all the great feedback that you give me. Um, and I'm really enjoying this and I hope to keep producing more videos. I have a website. Um, this is my website, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. And I'm also going to be available uh, on um, www.approveddoctor.co.uk. Um, where um, people from other parts of the world can uh, uh, speak to me uh, should they want to. Um, so I wish you a good night and stay, uh, keep well, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the very near future. Bye.